Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're enjoying this wonderful Friday. In this case study, I'm going to be sharing with you how I can validate if a module is faulty by reprogramming it. Now, this isn't something that I recommend doing just off of a whim. You need to follow a specific framework that will instruct you when to program the module to make sure that um, it will fix the issue or to determine if it's faulty, okay? So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into it, you guys. This presentation is titled, Why a Used ABS Module Failed on a 2014 Chevy Equinox. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Curtis Harden. I'm an independent all-tail diagnostic consultant. I align people with the best tool strategies and then I give them the one-on-one -on -one support that you see in this presentation. So if this is gonna make your shop better, go ahead and head on over to alltelltech.co.za. Now, what you're gonna be learning today is the tools used in this case study. We're gonna be defining the C0560 error code, and we're gonna be deciphering the need to program a module, okay? And lastly, the step-by-step -step process of programming encoding okay now what we used are the following your windows 10 laptop your maxisys ultra and the vcmi as your pass-through device the use brake control module or your abs module and your battery maintainer okay so to give you guys a little bit of background the client is an auto mechanic at a car dealership and he reached out to me about the use brake control module that he installed, okay? Attempting to configure the module using the Maxis Ultra but faced persistent issues with a error code that wouldn't go away, okay? So he sought my expertise to guide him through programming um, the module using the GM TechLine Connect software, and that's what I'm gonna show with you guys, okay? So the brake control module, so this bad boy does a lot more than just stop your car. It has a bunch of features like ABS traction control and even hill start assist to make sure you ride uh, smoother and safer. Now the code that we found is called a C056D and this is electronic control unit hardware, okay? If you see this code, it's, it's a red flag and um, reason being is because like if you look at this sim system, system, uh, symptom byte list, okay, um, this is like a secret language for the engineers to have a deeper look into what's going on. But this is basically something that is internal, okay? It's nothing that we can fix, um, you know, with our limited knowledge, okay? Now, this code will come up Every time you start the car, the ECU will do a quick self-test, okay? So just imagine like it's taking its own temperature and then when something goes off, boom, you'll get the code, okay? Now all it needs to check this is some juice from the battery and a ground connection. So even if the battery is acting up, the check will still run, okay? Now the first thing I did was I put this error code in the repair information and I wanted to see the workflow um, that it gave me. So if you look here, you know, three says, if the DTC is set uh, in the device that can be programmed, program the device that set the DTC, okay? And then <clears throat> we read further to step four, if the DTC is set in a device that cannot be programmed, um, replace the device that set the DTC, okay? So basically, if we program it and it doesn't work, we need to replace it, okay? If it won't let us program it, then it also needs to replace, okay? Now, what I also did too um, is I wanted to check uh, the uh, procedure on what needs to be done after you install a uh, brake control module, okay? And you can see here there's two uh, procedures. There's the programming procedure, and there's the coding or configuration procedure, okay? So that's what we need to keep in mind. So step one, we're gonna go ahead and use the TechLine Connect software to program this brake control 
module, okay? So let's get to it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure your ignition's on, your battery maintainer set up, and um, we're gonna select the correct VCMI here, which is the Maxi Flash VCMI. Okay, I don't know why that came up. GM is always updating their servers, by the way. It's, it's annoying. <laughs> so you can see here we have um, a summary of our vehicle. And I'm going to go ahead and click the SPS2 uh, menu. And here it's going to pick up our VIN number. And then once it does that, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the replace and reprogram because that's what we did and we're gonna go ahead and click next okay now uh, here are all the control units you see here on the left all right and the one we're gonna be looking for is this second one right here the electronic brake control module okay so we're gonna go ahead and select that now keep in mind you guys like I can go a lot faster but um, the way I teach is I like the client to do it themselves just because it, you have muscle memory, okay? And I learn better by doing things instead of just watching it, you know? Um, so we're going to go ahead and click proceed. And uh, it's going to put this in our account once it has been successfully programmed, the VIN number, okay? And uh, the next screen here, okay, you can see the calibrations that it's going to update. All right, and then this is the, the new software version. Okay, and let's go ahead and start the program. Okay, all right, so first it downloads it, and then it's going to write that information into the ECU, which is right here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and speed that up. And then once we're done, uh, there's an option to clear the DTC. Okay, I'm going to click later. All right, we're going to clear that. And once that's done, we can go on to the next procedure. Okay, and the next procedure is the configuration process. Okay, so all we do is we're going to go back to the electronic brake control module and click setup. All right, we're going to go ahead and click next. And we're going to follow the prompts. Okay. All right, before starting this procedure, align the front wheel straight and center. Uh, okay, we're gonna click yes. And we're gonna go ahead and watch this thing do its thing, okay? And all we have to do here, these are um, all the routines that we need to do. It's just gonna do it automatically. We don't need to like check it. So we're gonna click next and we just listen to what they say. So click next. And we're going to do this okay click next again and we got to do that you see and once all that's done please turn ignition off and press next okay so the clients turning it off and then he's gonna go ahead and click next and it's gonna I think there's gonna be a countdown let me see yep there's a countdown all right so I'm just gonna fast that up all right and then we're gonna turn the ignition back on and click next all right, and then uh, it looks like everything has been done. We're gonna click finish, and then we're gonna get our confirmation here, okay, which you can print out. All right, so we did the programming, we did the coding. Now we need to go back and use the Autel to determine um, if we have that error code left, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and ID the vehicle here, and uh, we're gonna do a quick auto scan. Okay, fast forward it. All right, here, cool. Now, when we're scanning all these modules here, um, the client did tell me that this error code on the power steering was not there. Okay, it wasn't there before, so Sometimes I notice when you program certain modules and they have a direct relationship with another module, um, you might need to update that software, okay? So what I did here, I went back and I can still see we have that error code here, all right? 
So what I did was um, I tried to delete it. It didn't go through. And I wanted to just um, investigate the, the code. So I went into the Intelligent Diagnostics app. I wanted to see you know, what TSBs that were there. Now this is quite handy because having this type of data in front of you can streamline your, your workflow. All right, it, you, know, you don't necessarily have to go back to your, your laptop and stuff. Um, but here are the possible solutions. And it says test the control module, update it or replace if necessary, okay? So um, that's what we did. And I'm, I'm just you know going through a couple screens to see if I can get some data, okay? Um, this is in the power steering. All right, and um, I think I actually go into the power steering. I'm gonna go fast forward it, you guys. Okay, here's one here. Let me let me go back. All right, you see this here? It says check the uh, power steering control module for codes. If the C zero five sixty is stored, reprogram the PCM to the latest software calibration. Okay, um, and yeah, when I go into the power control module it it said here lost communication with electronic brake control module so there is a core relationship with it all right and i looked at the uh uh i think i looked at the tsb on this one as well all right yeah both of these need to be addressed all right so what i'm going to do now at this point is uh, i'm going to update this module and just see if that fixes the issue okay so let's go ahead and go back to the TechLine Connect software and reprogram the PCM, P P S C M. All right. So we're back here. We're going to select electronic power steering and we're going to go to programming. Okay. And once that's done, we're going to go ahead and click next on the bottom right. Okay. All right. So there's a little summary here. Da, 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 da. We're going to click Start Programming. Okay, so it downloads it and then it's going to write that calibration file onto the ECU. All right, and here's our confirmation page. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear the DTCs. All right, and then we're done with that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the Maxisys Ultra and see if this indeed fixed the issue in the uh, power steering control module and the electronic brake control module. Okay, so you can see we, we don't have any error codes there, but we still have one in the electronic brake control module. So if I go back into it, you can still see we have this hard code fault in the module, all right? So it's safe to say that this module is indeed faulty, okay? Now, quick summary. If your module has a C056D, it's probably an internal hardware issue, okay? It's not a good code to have, all right? And the only time I attempt to program a module is when I'm instructed to do so, okay? Um, I had some clients, sometimes they'll have a problem and they'll come to me and say, Kurt, what if we just reprogram it? Well, sometimes that error code is a hardware related code, meaning like um, maybe there's an underlying condition and if it's not communicating, programming is not gonna solve anything. So only do it when you're instructed to, okay? And third, sometimes when you reprogram a module, other related modules may also need to be updated to the same software level, okay? So sometimes the manufacturer will tell you this. Um, other times you'll see in our case, we programmed one, another one was out of date and it instructed us to program that one to get everything back on the same software level, okay? And then if you work on GM, they give you 24 months per VIN number. So you can install the donor module without buying another subscription, okay? I spelled subscription wrong, but yeah, you can buy another subscription and this is cool. I mean, um, 
That way you don't have to pay, what is it, 50 bucks now? They're raising their price, okay? So that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, if you enjoyed this presentation, comment, like, subscribe. And if you would like for me to uh, set you up with any training for J25D4, head on over to alltelltech.co.za and book the J25D4 training consultation service. And I'll get you squared away like I did with my client, okay? So with that, have a wonderful weekend, guys. And take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.